This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it is Friday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. This time around, we're looking at a creature type, goblins. Goblins are the representative race for red. This means that they are sentient beings that appear throughout the multiverse, and they represent what red is all about, impulsiveness and chaos. To be eligible for this list, a card had to have the goblin creature type or create goblin creature tokens. In all, there were 433 cards that were eligible for this list, and in this video, we're going to talk about the 10 of those that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A Pro Tour, Mythic Championship, or Players Tour Top 8, as well as a Legacy or Vintage Championship Top 8 is worth 2 points, and a Grand Prix or Magic Fest Top 8 is worth 1 point. At number 10, it's Legion War Boss. This guy's pretty nice because he can make his own army. Making a 1-1 token with haste every turn is great, even if it does have to attack every turn. The War Boss helps make that downside a little bit less of a problem thanks to Mentor, which allows him to make a 1-1 into a 2-2 permanently whenever he and one of those tokens attack together. Anytime a creature can produce multiple bodies, it's pretty nice as it makes spot removal considerably worse. Plus, if you have efficient removal to back him up, Legion War Boss can really snowball. The War Boss has been played in the main board of aggro decks like Red Deck Wins and Boros Aggro while it was in Standard, and it has also been featured in the sideboard of Control decks. The War Boss can be nice in the mirror as a source of damage that you only have to commit mana to once, but keeps adding to the board anyway, so it can really help you gain an advantage against your opponent. The War Boss also already has one point in Legacy where it's been featured in Mono Red Prison decks where it serves as a win condition. These decks lock the opponent out of doing most things with cards like Blood Moon and Ensnaring Bridge. The War Boss and his tokens can usually attack every turn, but nothing else can. The War Boss still has some time in Standard, and the fact it has already been played in Legacy is a good sign that it will continue to gain more points going forward. At number 9, it is Jim Palm Incinerator. One rarely casts this goblin, and that's because his cycling ability is crazy strong in a tribal goblin deck. Two mana to kill something and draw a card at instant speed is an insane deal, and sure, you need to have some goblins in play for the Incinerator to do that, but that's not a big ask in a goblin deck. And, hey, in a pinch, you can still play this as a creature if you're desperate. Though I think one generally hopes they aren't that desperate. In Block Standard, Extended, and Legacy, the Incinerator has been played almost exclusively in Goblin decks. The Incinerator doesn't have any points since 2012, but Goblin decks are often on the fringes of Legacy, so it wouldn't be shocking for it to gain points in that format at some point. The Incinerator has also recently been added to Magic Arena for the Historic format, and if that format ever has premier events, it wouldn't come as a huge shock to see the Incinerator gain some points there. At number 8, it is Hordling Outburst, which is the only non-creature to make this list. Instead, the Outburst is a sorcery that makes 3 1-1 one, one goblins for 3 mana. That's a pretty nice rate, as getting 3 bodies out of 1 card can be pretty potent, particularly in a deck that can take extra advantage of going wide. While in Standard, it was primarily played in aggro decks. These decks tended to run things like Stoke the Flames and Atarka's Command, which could give you some extra value out of a card like Hordling Outburst. It was also played in Jeskai Ascendancy decks, which largely ran non-creature spells that could produce creature tokens like the Outburst, and could pretty easily find lethal once it went wide enough. The Outburst doesn't have any points outside of Standard, but could perhaps find some success in Pioneer in the future. At number 7, it is Kikijiki Mirror Breaker, a legendary goblin. Most of the goblins on this list are super aggressive cards that give you great stats or sources of damage for a low cost. Kikijiki isn't that. Instead, he's a combo enabler. Kiki was printed way back in 2004, but he wasn't played at all in block or standard. However, he did start seeing play in Legacy in 2007, where he was part of the super broken Hulk Flash deck. This deck used Protean Hulk to quickly assemble combo pieces, of which Kikijiki was one of, that could win the game right away. I've gone in depth on that combo in several other videos, so I'm not going to do it here, but suffice it to say that Kiki's ability to make copies of creatures enabled the deck to do as much damage as it wanted to when it got the combo pieces in play. 
That deck was quickly banned out of the format, and Kiki hasn't gained points in Legacy since 2007. However, once the modern format was created in 2011, Kiki found a home where he could really thrive. There, he was played in Splinter Twin decks. While plan A for those decks was usually to use Splinter Twin on a Deceiver Exarch or Pestermite and win the game with a million tokens, plan B was to use Kiki Jiki in place of a Splinter Twin. Like Twin, he could allow you to make as many tokens as you want, since each copy you made of the Exarch or Pestermite would allow you to untap Kiki Jiki. Kiki was also played in Birthing Pod decks, which ran several creature-based combos since it could search up whatever creatures it wanted. In those decks, the plan was Kiki plus Restoration Angel, which would allow you to also make a million copies of the Angel. Eventually, Splinter Twin and Birthing Pod both got banned out of Modern, and that has really slowed Kiki down over the last several years. Interestingly, Kiki has never been banned himself, but he's been part of the reason that cards like Birthing Pod, Splinter Twin, and Flash all got banned. In Modern these days, he sees a bit of play in Court of Calling Toolbox decks, which play Kiki for the same reason he has always been played. He helps you combo off. While he has slowed down and has no points since 2018, I wouldn't count him out just yet. At number 6, it is Goblin Chain Whirler. At worst, the Whirler is a 3-mana 3-3 with First Strike that does 1 damage to the opponent. That's already a card worth looking at in a lot of aggro decks. However, he can usually cause even more problems than that, killing X1s and lowering the loyalty of an opposing Planeswalker. If you can give the Whirler Death Touch, that's when things really get silly. Because of its somewhat tricky mana cost, the Whirler was almost exclusively played in mono red aggro decks and standard. The Chain Whirler also has a few points in Pioneer red deck wins. It looks well positioned to continue to put up points in Pioneer going forward. At number 5, it is Siege Gang Commander, one of my all-time favorite cards. I played Goblins way back in the extended format of 2003, and this was my favorite card in the deck. While he might have a higher converted mana cost than most Goblins in those types of decks, he is an insane finisher. He gives you a ton for only 4 mana, including 5-5 five, five worth of stats spread across 4 bodies, and the ability to sacrifice Goblins to do 2 damage to an opponent or their creatures. As I've already hinted, the Commander was played in extended Goblin decks. It was also played in Goblin decks in Standard and Legacy. One of the nastier things you could do alongside Siege Gang Commander is to get Goblin Sharpshooter in play while using the ability. This turns those shocks into lightning bolts and lets you do 6 direct damage for 4 mana. That's some awesome reach. The Commander has received a couple of reprints that gave it more time in Standard. First it was reprinted in 10th edition, and then it also received a reprint in Dominaria. And while there wasn't really a competitive Goblin deck for him to be part of in Standard, he was still played in a lot of red decks. This included more aggressive decks like Red Deck Wins and Rakdos Aggro, but it was also played in Control Deck Sideboards as something to bring in in the Mirror Match. At number 5, it is Mog Fanatic, a card that was once one of the best one-drops in the whole game, but it eventually got nerfed by a rule change. In its heyday, combat damage still used the stack. This meant that you could block something with the Fanatic, put the 1 damage from the Fanatic's power on the creature it's blocking, and then sacrifice the Fanatic itself to do an additional 1 damage. This meant the Fanatic could easily take down X2s and even give you a 2 for 1 against a couple of X1s. But eventually the rules changed so that damage didn't use the stack, and Mog Fanatic came out of it on the other end as a much less powerful card. It is still a 1 mana 1-1 one -one that can sacrifice itself to kill something small, but that's not nearly as good. In Block and Standard, he was played in decks like Sly and Red Deck Wins, and he was played in similar decks in Extended. In addition to your usual Red Aggro decks, Burn decks, and Zoo decks, the Fanatic was also played in Goblin Tribal. All of this allowed him to amass a ton of points in the format. He was even good enough for Legacy Goblins, putting up a few points there. It is really sad that this guy became so much worse when the rules changed, but at least he was great for a while. At number 3, it is Murderous Red Cap. The Red Cap is a nice little card. It's a 4 mana 2-2 two -two that does 2 to something when it comes down. And then you add Persist to the mix, which means it comes back as a 1-1 one -one and does 1 to something when it dies the first time. In short, it's hard to not come out ahead with Murderous Red Cap in most scenarios. A 2 for 1 is very easy to accomplish. In Standard, it was played in decks like Black White Tokens and Fairies on this strength alone. What's more is, Murderous Red Cap was a key card in a combo deck in formats outside of Standard. In particular, the Red Cap could be combined with Malira Silvok Outcast and any Sacrifice Outlet to do infinite damage to your opponent on the spot. Since Malira prevents the minus one minus one counter from ever going on to the Red Cap, it just keeps persisting every time it dies. 
This combo was incredibly easy to put together in Modern because you could use Birthing Pod to get the whole thing together way too consistently. As we've already said, Birthing Pod decks were dominant for a while in the early days of Modern, but it eventually got banned. The Red Cap hasn't found much success since the banning, only gaining a few points here and there, and none since 2016. And while it is pretty high up on this list, it doesn't look super likely that the Red Cap will be gaining more points going forward. At number two, it is Goblin Rabble Master, a card somewhat similar to Legion Warboss. Both are three mana 2-2s two that make 1-1 one -one tokens that have to attack, but while the Rabble Master doesn't have Mentor, it does have the capability of doing absolutely absurd amounts of damage very quickly, much more quickly than the War Boss. If you can keep your opponent's table clear of blockers, the Rabble Master will just wreck your opponent, and even if they do find a way to kill it at some point, you're probably still going to have Goblin tokens lying around. The Rabble Master was mostly played in Red Aggro decks while it was in Standard, and it has gained points in the same types of decks in Pioneer. It also has a few points in Modern, one coming in Scred Red, the other in Mardu Pyromancer. Like the War Boss, the Rabble Master is also played as a win condition in Mono Red Prison decks in Legacy. Rabble Master is still a very active card, and the race for the top two on this list is very close, as the number one card only has one more point than the Rabble Master, and that card is Goblin Guide. A 1 mana 2-2 two -two with haste is going to do a lot of damage in a game when you play it on turn 1. It does come with a downside. Your opponent gets to look at the top card of their library, and when it attacks, if it's a land, they get to draw it. That is a real downside, but make no mistake. Goblin Guide tends to help make opponents dead quickly enough that giving them extra cards doesn't really matter. In fact, the effect is not actually 100% downside, as it does give you a bit of information about your opponent's deck and hand. In Standard, the guide was played in a variety of aggro decks like Landfall, Naya, and Boros, but it was also played in more typical red deck wins aggro decks. The guide, being printed in 2009, was also around for the waning years of Extended, where it managed a few points. Modern has been where he has really thrived, though, being one of the best one-drops in the whole format, especially for decks like Burn, Death's Shadow Zoo, and red deck wins. The guide doesn't have any points in 2020 just yet, but it seems pretty unlikely it will go the whole year without adding to its score. Well, that does it for this MTG Top 10. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to see the Top 10s I've already made, there are over 270 of them, you should see the playlist on your screen now. Thanks for watching.